Have you ever cried happy tears over a plate of ribeye because carnivore finally calmed your gut, your cravings, or your A1C? This one hits the heart. Today we're asking a charged question. Is this the end of carnivore? Even saying it out loud feels emotional for many of us. This way of eating changed everything. So why question it? Because real health isn't a religion. It's a relationship with your body and relationships grow. By the end of this video, you'll see that this isn't an obituary for carnivore. It's a permission slip to get smarter and more flexible if your signals say you need to. Until then, I'm still carnivore and still grateful for what it's done in my life. Let's start with the basics. Plain English, no whiteboard required. Your body always needs some glucose for certain cells. When you don't eat carbs, your liver can make glucose from other stuff, amino acids, glycerol from fat, and recycled lactate. That process takes energy. Think of it as the liver working overtime with fat burning paying the overtime bill. Meanwhile, ketones rise and start supplying energy to the brain and other tissues. Over time, that switch helps spare protein. Your body leans on more fat and ketones and less on breaking down your own muscle. That protein sparing adaptation is a big reason many people feel steady and clear on low carb or carnivore. So where does the keto is stressful idea come from? Two common culprits that masquerade as stress. Electrolytes and early adaptation. When insulin falls, you naturally dump more sodium and water, what old school papers call the naturesis of fasting. If you don't replace salt, and often potassium and magnesium, you feel headachy, fatigued, and even anxious. That's not steak's fault, that's plumbing. Replace minerals, and a lot of the stress melts away. Next, thyroid chatter. You may hear that very low carb lowers T3, the active thyroid hormone. That can happen, and in several studies it did without classic signs of thyroid disease and without crashing resting metabolism. It looks more like an energy efficiency adjustment for some people, especially during weight loss or low energy availability. The key is to read labs with symptoms and performance, not panic at a single number. Now, why would some long-term carnivores add a bit of carbohydrate and feel better? Two big reasons. Reason one, performance fuel. Carnivore and keto make you a world-class fat burner. We've seen elite ultra-endurance athletes who are keto-adaptive reach extraordinarily high rates of fat oxidation while maintaining normal muscle glycogen patterns on long runs. That's amazing for steady efforts. But when you ask for frequent, near all-out bursts, think track intervals, CrossFit Metcons, or a hard team sport, small, well-timed carbs can help with top-tier performance. Classic sports science shows carbs during intense work can improve time to exhaustion and performance. And in elite walkers, a strict keto phase impaired exercise economy paired with higher carb approaches. Translation, your engine may be mostly diesel now, but a splash of high octane when you redline can be useful for some. Reason two, the gut. Many of you tell me, doc, carnivore fixed my IBS. That checks out. The best studied IBS diet removes fermentable carbs, the low FODMAP approach, which reduces gas and bloating for many. On the other hand, some people sleep better, feel better, and stay more regular when they add carefully chosen carbs, often low FODMAP plants or small doses of fermentable fiber. Because the gut makes short-chain fatty acids like propionate and butyrate from those fibers. Those molecules can nudge satiety hormones, GLP-1, PYY, and may reduce energy intake. Different guts, different wins. Let's address the elephant in the room, weight loss stalls. Stalls aren't always about carbs. Sleep debt, under eating protein, not salting enough, or doing the same workout forever. All can stall progress. That said, in some people, a touch of carbohydrate around training or in the evening improves workout quality, sleep, and how many calories they unconsciously burn moving through the day. There's also evidence that during weight loss maintenance, lower carb diets can help people keep a slightly higher daily energy expenditure, especially in folks who naturally secrete more insulin. That's one reason some do beautifully staying low carb long term. What about blood sugar? 
Some carnivores worry when fasting glucose shifts up a bit. Step back and look at the whole picture. A1C, after meal glucose, fasting insulin, and overall variability. In real world clinical programs using nutritional ketosis for type 2 diabetes, people have seen meaningful improvements in A1C, meds, and multiple cardiometabolic markers at two years. That's not the end, that's better health. A quick geek moment still in plain English. Ketones aren't just fuel, they're signals. One ketone beta hydroxybutyrate can turn down certain enzymes, HDACs, involved in inflammation and stress signaling. A gut made molecule from fiber, butyrate, can press some of those same switches, often even more strongly in the colon. So a strict carnivore approach and a cautious modified carnivore approach are pulling some of the same anti-inflammatory levers by different routes. Nice to know we have multiple tools. So, is this the end of carnivore? I don't think so. What's ending is the idea that one version should fit every metabolism, every training style, every gut. For many, especially those with IBS like me, autoimmune flares, severe insulin resistance, or food addiction, staying strict carnivore may remain the cleanest, calmest signal. For others, a modified carnivore, meat first, minerals on point, and a small strategic lane for the plants or carbs that clearly make you feel and perform better might be the upgrade. And I want to applaud the folks in the carnivore and low carb world who are talking about this openly. It takes courage to tell your audience, hey, I tested something and here's what changed. That's not betrayal, that's how science works. We trust, but we verify. We test, we track, and we keep what serves our health. So if you're an influencer sharing your journey, thank you. You make this community smarter and safer. Here's where I land as a clinician who cares about root causes. Carnivore works because it removes a lot of what inflames modern bodies. Refined carbs, seed oil, heavy foods, endless snacking, and trigger plants for sensitive guts. That foundation, carnivore core, is powerful. But biology is personal. If your dashboard says you're stalling, dragging, or not sleeping, you have permission to adjust on purpose, not out of panic. But before you add carbs back, fix electrolytes, check protein and total energy, improve sleep and training, and yes, if all else fails, test a small amount of the right carbohydrate at the right time. Then measure what matters and decide. That's medicine, not dogma. I'll close with this. For me, carnivore stays for now. It's been a gift. For you, the end of carnivore might actually be the beginning of metabolic flexibility that fits your life. Either way, let's judge by outcomes, not ideology. Drop your experience in the comments. Did adding a little carb help your sleep or workouts? Or did doubling down on salt protein in bedtime do the trick? Your story helps someone else make a wiser choice. So let's continue this discussion in the comments. I'll see you in the next one.